Welcome, everybody, to the Winner's Circle Sports Betting Channel. I'm your host, Ross Benjamin. It is Thursday, October the 19th, and today I am joined by Mr. Doug Upstone of DocSports.com and also Mr. Kyle Hunter of GamblersWorld.net, myself of GamblersWorld.net as well. Uh, without further ado, Kyle, how are you? I'm doing all right. I am catching my first cold of the season. The germ factories, the kids bring them back, and I, I catch it. So uh, hopefully the voice holds up, but I'm doing all right. Looking forward to another weekend uh, of football. A good weekend last weekend, so let's try to keep it going. There you go. I ca caught a little cold in college football last week and went four and six. Uh, <laughs> but uh, still a, a tremendous college football star for me. But, Doug, how are you? Uh, well, if we're talking colds, I don't have one. Okay, so the, I'm <laughs> fine. It's, it's 100 degrees here still. Uh, basically, uh, the next three days are going to be record highs. So, uh, so yeah, so that's good. And, but looking forward to some football, and uh, we got some baseball in the area, maybe just for a couple of days. But uh, we'll see what happens, uh, how that all plays out, Ross. Yeah, so uh, some Major League Baseball playoffs going on in Doug's neck of the woods is uh, Jim Quinn's beloved Philadelphia Phillies. Travel Arizona to in uh, take on the Diamondbacks at 5:07 p.m. Eastern Time. I always love those odd starts. 5:07, 8:03. Round them off. Come on. Anyway, uh, in any event, yeah, yeah. In any event, we'll be talking college football today. TCU in Kansas, Tennessee, Alabama, and South Carolina in Missouri. Before we get to that, folks, just a friendly reminder. If you have not subscribed to our YouTube channel, I don't know what you're waiting for. It's absolutely free. There's no strings attached. There's no hidden agenda. All you have to do is click on that subscribe button if you're watching on your mobile device, which is right underneath your video box or your smart TV for, uh, for that matter. And also, if you're watching on your PC, you'll see a WC logo right there in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. Just click on that. That will get you subscribed. We thank everybody who have subscribed already, and we encourage those of you who haven't, subscribe. And for all of you, if you haven't done this already, whether you're new or old, go into your YouTube settings, hit that alert notification bell for the Winner's Circle Sports Betting Channel, and you'll be notified immediately upon any of our podcasts going up on our channel. All right, let's get right to the meat and potatoes in uh, TCU in Kansas, Doug. Um, Kansas State, I should say. Kansas State is a six and a half point favorite in this game, and the total is 59. Uh, K State coming off a 38 21 win at Texas Tech last week. TCU, impressive performance at home against BYU. Not so much that they won the game and covered, but the manner in which they did so, Doug. I mean, they totally dominated that contest from start to finish. Yeah, and this one, so this, this Big 12 battle is going to be on uh, ESPN2 at 7 Eastern. Kansas State actually still remains in the hunt to uh, uh, get back to the Big 12 championship game, uh, which, which they uh, made and won last year. And so, but they can't afford any more miscues, okay? TCU, they won't be returning to the Big 12 championship game. Uh, pretty much now looking for a quality bowl assignment, uh, and the, the only way they can do that is by keep winning. Now, honestly, both guys, my initial thought on this was Kansas State. Uh, and the reason why, uh, balance attack, uh, they play solid defense, and they generally don't beat themselves. TCU is only 4-3, and three, and is starting to take on the characteristics of their coach, Sonny Dykes. Every stop that Sonny Dykes has been at, a little initial bump, okay, with, with things, and then all – Everything starts to settle in. His teams uh, typically are very good offensively, not so great defensively, uh, and they seem to plateau right around seven and five, and he ends up either leaving or gets the ax, okay, from that standpoint. TCU has turned the ball over tw uh, two or more times in five of their seven games. Kansas State, well, it's about stability there, okay? They have the consistency, and that goes all the way back to the Bill Snyder era of many, many moons ago. But then I started breaking down the numbers on this one. Wildcats secondary, as you both you guys know, very beatable. Listed 116th in yards allowed, uh, slow afoot, and you can go over the top on them. And the Horned Frogs can certainly do that with their number 18 passing attack. So I think they're going to go after this that secondary. Last week, Will Howard, the senior quarterback of Kansas State, he was pulled after really a, a, a number of kind of just 
uh, not very good performances. Seven picks he already has uh, this season. He was replaced by freshman Avery Johnson, who ended up against Texas Tech, led his team to five touchdowns. So that's how they got their big victory last week. Coach Chris Kleiman has said that both players will start this year. And as we know, guys, in the second half of the season, if you're playing two quarterbacks, not sure where your season's going to go going forward. With that in mind, Wildcats are the unstable team in this one. So I flipped my thought on this one. I'm going to go with the underdog the, in the Horn Frogs in this encounter. And it should be noted that since losing to Colorado in their opening game, they have outgained every team they have played this season. I'm going to say this is a three point game either way. And I'm going to go Horn Frogs, okay, with this one. <laughs> All right, so Doug likes TCU plus the six and a half at Kansas State. And, you know, Kyle, they say if you got two quarterbacks where you really don't have one. So uh, any uh, take on this game? Yeah, I mean, I was impressed that TCU brought in their backup or third string quarterback or whoever you would uh, say he was at the beginning. The Josh Hoover threw for 439 yards last week. Um, both of these teams you know how they always say, guys, the backup quarterback's the most popular guy, you know, for the fan base. And they always saw oh, the backup quarterback. He would be so much better. For both these teams last week, that actually kind of worked out. You know, both those backups played well. Um, Hoover threw for 439 yards, four touchdowns against BYU. I think in a game like this, um, you know, Kansas State is well coached. Kleiman, I don't like betting against Kleiman. Uh, that, that, that's tricky for me. However, I think that the Kansas State secondary, like Doug said, is far weaker than they've been in past years. That was actually a big strength of theirs for many years, especially when Bill Snyder was there. But, um, you know, the team's still good special teams wise. Their secondary used to be locked down. Now they're one of the weakest in the Big 12. TCU is going to throw it a lot. If you look at their splits of passes and runs here in recent games, they are going really pass heavy. I think they'll do the same again here. Uh, what that makes me kind of like in this one is the over. I think that there could be some points back and forth. Avery Johnson uh, for Kansas State, five touchdowns running is pretty crazy. Now, Texas Tech, to be fair, kind of gave them that game in the second half. Texas Tech with a lot of turnovers. Um, their backup came in, did not play well at all. So and this one, I would rather trust the offenses than try to figure out a side, honestly. Um, I think the, the line's probably pretty close to right here. Uh, like I said, kleiman has been really good against the spread. Don't know that I want to lay points with Kansas State here, though, because they do have plenty of flaws. So I'm going to side with over 59 as my favorite. Yeah, over 59 is Kyle's lean, but the official pick from Doug Upstone is on uh, the TCU Horn Frogs plus six and a half at Kansas State. Um, I, I'm going to agree with Doug. I, I just don't like what I've seen from Kansas State. They're not the atypical Kansas State team I've seen in recent seasons. Not to say that I don't think they're a good team, but they're not a great team, and they're not a legitimate Big 12 contender, in my opinion. Um, and what really turned me off was that effort at Oklahoma State a couple weeks ago. There was no excuse there uh, why they should lose to the Cowboys in that game. Um, and, uh, yeah, they did bounce back last week with that win at Texas Tech, but that's a whole hum type of team in Texas Tech. And like Kyle said, Texas Tech helped them off or helped them out an awful lot in that matchup. All right, I know the backup quarterbacks are very well liked. Uh, Kyle, you're no backup quarterback, but you're very well liked amongst our subscribers here. So uh, we're gonna, you're going to be covering the Alabama and Tennessee game. And that game will be, take place in Tuscaloosa with the uh, Crimson Tide right now, a nine-and-a-half point a total, 48-and-a-half. What do you got for us, my friend? Well, this is one of the bigger games of the weekend, obviously. We all remember how it went last year when Tennessee beat Alabama 52-49. to 49. What a game that was, back and forth, just wild uh, finish to that game. Tennessee, not at all the same team they were last year, not even close to the same team. I knew the drop from Hendon Hooker to Joe Milton was going to be pretty big. It's been even bigger than anybody would have thought. Milton is just not efficient on offense. He can make that one or two wow you type play where you think, man, this guy, he is something else. But consistently, he's not been very good. If you look at his stats, 54.2 uh, PFF grade against South Carolina, 62.7 PFF grade against Texas A&M. 
I don't know why I would be confident with um, Milton going against an Alabama defense based on what he's done against other decent defenses. Now, this is going to be the best defense he's played so far this year. Alabama, if you watch too, uh, Saban has done a lot of these interviews, Nick Saban, and in the background you see Tennessee's name on a lot of things. Like they have had this game circled. Um, he has these binders, let's say beat Tennessee or something like that, where – uh, you know, Saban does not allow those kids to forget about the fact that they lost to them last year. I think the the point spread here is fair. I would rather bet Alabama than I would bet Tennessee. I just think that, you know, nine, nine and a half is quite a few points, uh, especially with a total that's sitting at 48 and a half. So the way I want to look here is I want to take Tennessee team total under. I don't think Tennessee is nearly as efficient as they've been in the past. And I know this kind of goes contrary to typical thought because you would say the average guy would say was well, 52 49 last year you have to bet the over i mean it's so easy but you guys know the odds makers are good at this if they're putting a number this low there's a big reason for that alabama's offense way different than last year too i mean you, there's no way you can say milro uh, stacks up to what bryce young was doing and milro is one of those guys that he hits a big play once in a while too but consistency in the passing game has been a problem he was one for 11 in one stretch, I believe, last week against Arkansas. And they jump out to that lead, barely held on. Uh, I think Alabama will come with a good effort here, but I trust Alabama's defense much better than it, much more than I trust the Alabama offense. So I'm going to go with Tennessee team total under 19 and a half as my official play here. All right. Tennessee team total under 19 and a half in that game at Alabama next on Saturday, I should say. Yeah, a little bit of a difference. 52-49 game last year, Doug, but the quarterbacks in that matchup was uh, Hendon Hooker and a guy named Bryce Young who went pretty high in the draft. Uh, any take on this guy? And th this one's a little more confusing to me. Um, you know, up to up to nine and a half, uh, I, I, I kind of in some ways like Tennessee. So I, what I probably would suggest – is to wait and see if you can get a 10. Because if the money's coming this hard on Alabama right now, why not just sit it out? You can always get a nine and a half, likely, at, at this point, in terms of how it's going. The other thing, too, uh, that along with what Kyle said about the Alabama offense, the, the Tennessee defense does create a lot of havoc. That front seven really gets after the quarterback. They really look to try and create a lot of negative plays. I understand that, you know, Alabama's got the big revenge spot in, in this one here, but, you know, Alabama, uh, the last four meetings against Tennessee, two and two against the spread at home. So I'm just going to give a small lean uh, at minus or excuse me, plus nine and a half with Tennessee to get the job done in some manner. I, I'm not, I certainly wouldn't pick them to win the game. Uh, but you know, if, if they, <clears throat> excuse me, if they lost by 15 or 20, I can see that as well, but I just got a feeling they're going to hang around because of that defense and that weaker offensive line from Alabama. Yeah. I mean, I look at it like this, Alabama playing at home, uh, I got to believe their home field advantage is get, giving them an additional four points, at least, on the point spread. Doug, yeah. you probably could speak to this better. I don't yeah. know what your power rankings show. Uh, four and a half. But four and a half. So if that's the case, I mean, uh, five points on a neutral field. If you go to Knoxville, this game is, what, Alabama, maybe minus one and a half, maybe minus one uh, in that area. Um, with that being said, uh to me, I have a small lean at this particular moment in time, and I haven't put my college football picks up for Saturday yet on Tennessee. So that would be my lean there. But the official pick from Kyle Hunter is Tennessee under the team total of 19 and a half. Let me get to my game, which is South Carolina at Missouri. Um, and right now, Missouri is a seven and a half point favorite. The total is 60. And, uh, you know, here's the thing. Kyle just spoke about the odds makers are very good at what they do. And I've always professed to you guys out there over the years on this very same podcast that you need to think like an odds maker to really be successful in sports betting. Um, and think about this. I mean, you've got a two and four South Carolina team and they're facing a six and one Missouri team uh, that's nationally ranked in Missouri is just a seven and a half point home favor. To me, that speaks volumes. Uh, but you know, you got to look aside the numbers. South Carolina has played 
the much more difficult uh, schedule thus far than that of Missouri's. I mean, they've faced North Carolina undefeated, nationally ranked. Number one, Georgia undefeated. Uh, and at Tennessee, a team that's five and one. So it's not like they had an easy go of it. They lose a tough game last week, 41-39 at home to Florida. Uh, Missouri, on the other hand, this is what, what I call a bad situation for the Tigers and a good situation for the underdog because Missouri comes off an impressive win at Kentucky, nationally ranked Kentucky, last week. They got number one Georgia on deck. And in between, they got a two and four South Carolina coming to town that's coming off a home loss against an average at best Florida team. So I'm going to, uh, again, just from a situational standpoint, I, I'm going to think that South Carolina is going to make this game much more interesting um, for Missouri fans than they would hope for. I'm not going to go out on a limb and call for the outright upset, although it wouldn't shock me. But I like uh, South Carolina to stay inside this number, and I'm going to take the Gamecocks plus seven and a half on the road against Missouri. And uh, Luther Burden, by the way, uh, got banged up and missed the end of last game. I'm not sure what his status is right now, uh, but I didn't see him on the injury report earlier. Uh, Kyle, you have any information in that regard? I think Burton's going to play here. Um, Missouri has okay. several guys who are kind of banged up that are trying to play through injury. They're running back Schrader as well. He's questionable, I believe. So, um, yeah, Missouri, as far as this game, Ross, I think this one's complicated handicap because South Carolina has played the toughest schedule of anybody in the country so far. Now, uh, Beamer goes and breaks his foot after <laughs> getting upset after the game last week, kicks something, breaks his foot. Probably not the best idea, even though you just lost at home to uh, Graham Mertz in Florida. Uh, this South Carolina team is a little bit hard for me to understand what they're going to be still. I mean, we're halfway through the season. Um, I think South Carolina is decent. Their defense is not good. The The offense is what will hold them in games. Um, you know, Spencer Rattler has been pretty good. I think he can have a good game here. Kentucky's offense had a lot of trouble against Missouri last week, but I think Kentucky's problem now is Devin Leary has not been near as good as they thought he was going to be. Uh, so big step up in class and quarterbacks being faced here. What I would want to bet here is over. And guys, I think you probably know, I like to bet unders more than I bet over. So it sounds kind of funny yeah. for me to say over multiple times, but over 60 is my lean. The reason that I'm not going to bet over 60, even though it's my lean, I was looking at the weather forecast for this one. 15 miles per hour wind with 25 miles per hour gust. Uh, that's too much for me to take over 60, uh, you know, even if my numbers would suggest it, because the weather does matter. And like we've said before, winds matter the most of anything. Now, yeah. you know, I think you could argue who it would help if it's windy. Uh, you know, it's not real clear cut there either. I would say in this one, Missouri's gone from six and a half up to seven and a half. Obviously, you blow right through a really important number. I think this game will be relatively close. So, while I don't have anything real strong on this one, Ross, uh, I can see where you're coming from here, taking the points. Again, just a situational type of play for me. Um, I would say that if these teams played seven times, that five of those times I would take uh, Missouri at just minus seven and a half. Again, I'm trusting the odds maker here. Like you just alluded to, Kyle, they opened at six and a half. Doesn't surprise me they went to seven and a half because – the novice guys out there will take a look at this and say, how could a six and one team just be a six and a half point favorite against a two and four team? Um, that too. Uh, in terms of the over, I looked at that initially and uh, there's a ton of money on the over, by the way, uh, volume of bets and money wagered on the over. But Kyle astutely points out 15 mile an hour wins. Uh, I'm sure that'll help the Missouri field goal kicker who, uh, nailed the 61 yarder earlier in the season. Uh, but sometimes uh, on the shorter variety, he's all over the map. So uh, there you go for what that's worth. But uh, your take there, Doug. Yeah, well, the one thing I'll kind of reference bo what both of you have said in, in different ways. Um, when looking at South Carolina on the road this year, or I should say in true away games, they're averaging 18 points per game, okay? It's a pretty low number for a team that's supposed to be high scoring. Subtract the 49 points that LSU uh, scored against Missouri, and in Missouri's other six conflicts, they're giving up 20.8 points per game. 
I gave strong consideration to the under on this one, but the, the, in trying to break the game down it, from a statistical standpoint and looking at the various factors, which you guys have mentioned, for example, Missouri, you know, where, where mentally where they might be for this game with Georgia on, on, ta on tap, Spencer Rattler, the ability to, uh, you know, still score points. I'm going to say that this game is, we're going to go down to the final minute. Missouri's up 34 24, and Spencer Rattler throws a touchdown, covers for South Carolina, goes over. Okay, so my official play here is the over on this one. All right, so there you go. So our official place on the games we've been assigned uh, Doug likes TCU plus six and a half at Kansas State. Kyle likes the Tennessee team total under 19 and a half against Alabama. And yours truly, Ross Benjamin, likes the South Carolina Gamecocks plus the seven and a half at Missouri. And I'm sure a lot of you are going to chime in with your comments, telling me I'm out of my mind on that pick. And that's perfectly okay. Just keep it respectful, and I'll get back to you as many, uh, as many of you as I can. Anyway, uh, Kyle. Uh, you're how many more? Is this the last week you're going to be joining us, or one more week after that? Next week as well. We'll do the uh, the lead up to Halloween here next week as well. Yeah. So Kyle will be with us another uh, week, and then he's uh, under contractual obligations, and then some family commitments that will uh, unable him to uh, join us weekly. He might chime in on occasion as we go along, especially during college basketball season. Uh, but you know, we'd like to thank you, Kyle. You did a done a terrific job. We're great. Uh, so glad to have you over at gamblersworld.net and certainly glad that you could participate with us on this, uh, podcast. You certainly uh, are an asset to each one of us and, uh, can't thank you enough, but having said all that, um, if people want to invest their hard earned money on Kyle Hunter's picks, why should they do so over at gamblersworld.net? Yeah, guys, coming off a good weekend. Um, and first, certainly, it's, it's always great to chat with you guys. I wish there was more time in the days. You know, there's only 24 hours. Yeah. Got to get some rest in there. And uh, schedules get definitely very busy. But um, it's been good to chat with both of you and uh, hopefully can uh, join you guys sometimes on the videos coming up as well. Absolutely. Uh, as far as last weekend, eight and four last weekend. So a good weekend, both in college and the NFL. Six and three in college, two and one in the NFL. Almost had the three and zero sweep. Thanks a lot, Patriots, for that safety that ruined the cover on that one. I know I wasn't the only one that was upset with Mac Jones and the Patriots there on that one. But I'll take an eight and four weekend at any point. Obviously, um, you know it's been a really good college run here for me. I've had some people saying that college has not been very good this year. It's fifty five point eight percent so far this year, guys. You know it was. 70% last year, 66% the year before. Uh, I'm not promising I'm going to do that every single time, but uh, we're going to grind out profits. And, uh, you know, it's been 87 and 46 run in the last 133 college football plays. So I'll take that. And uh, you can check out my plays over there at Gambler's World. Going to be a smaller card for me in college football this weekend. I'm not one of those guys that says, oh, it's my favorite card. I'm going to bet every single game. You know, here we go. I had nine plays last weekend in college, going to be smaller for me, three plays up so far, I'll probably add a couple more. And then I have a Thursday night play up in the NFL and a couple other NFL plays up, including my AFC East total of the year. So uh, some NFL plays ready to go as well there at Gambler's World. Yeah, I think some of your clients are a little bit spoiled, you know, because 55% folks, you can make a lot of money over the long haul at 55%, depending on how much money you bet. Uh, even at a couple hundred dollars a game, over 100 picks at 55%, do the math, and then uh, subtract the amount of money that you pay at a reasonable price for Kyle's picks for the season. And uh, I, I, it doesn't take Aristotle to find out that you're going to be making a, a very healthy profit. And look, there's still a lot of time left in college football, still a good six weeks of regular season action, conference championship games, bowl games, the college football playoffs, the college football championship game. So uh, a lot of time for Kyle to get inch closer to that 60% uh, number, but uh, a little over 55% is pretty damn good. Doug, the last I checked, and uh, tell the folks what's going on at Doc Sports uh, with 
Mr. Doug Upstone. Absolutely. NFL in particular, four straight winning weeks in the NFL hit my hit four best bets in a row in the NFL. So that's been very strong. And this week I got an eight play card, five in college, three in the NFL and the NFL in particular will have a, another seven unit best bet. So look to continue to deliver on those types of plays. Major League Baseball, 25 and 14 run in the playoffs the last three years. And uh, so see, see if we can get some more winners, whatever how, or however many games we're going to have coming up this weekend. So that'll be good. And Major League Baseball props still red hot 22 and 11, 66.6%. And look to, again, uh, even on today, Thursday, as we, as we record this, I do have uh, two plays in, in both of those as well. So that's going to be good. And the other uh, thing I mentioned last week, uh, Scott Spritzer and I are doing it's called Us Against the Spread, and what that is to show is basically like a newsletter, but in an, uh, given to you in an oral form, okay? So you can watch us and, and listen to uh, exactly what we're saying. These are not our premium picks, but they're, they're all the NFL games other than Thursday that we talk about, and eight or nine of the top, or eight to ten of the top games, and that's Us Against the Spread dot docsports.com available. You can just check it out, and uh, $19.99 for a month. Okay, so that's 90 to 100 picks that you'll be able to get and make your other selections, which we know that you are doing, by the way. <laughs> Oral form. I love it. In any event, good stuff from Doc or from uh, Doug over at DocSports.com. Check them out there, folks. Again, Kyle Hunter over at GamblersWorld.net, where we guarantee our single game and multi-game daily packages uh, and also subscription plans of up to 30 days or fewer. And um, you know what, folks, if you don't make a profit, you don't win. We're going to credit your account back the exact amount of your purchase price. Uh, Ross Benjamin, all sports, 59 and 31, 66% since September the 12th. All documented at several sites, not only just at gamblersworld.net. Also, since uh, August the 4th, 107 and 68 in all sports, 61%. College football. You know, I buried myself last week with an 0-3 weekday selections in college football. Bounced back with a 4-3 and Saturday, including a ten, uh, top play on Notre Dame. Uh, but still, 24-11 and um, in college football since September the 14th. And going back to December 2nd of last season, which is documented by sports capping because I can't say it's documented by Gambler's World because we didn't exist back then. But anyway, 46 and 25 uh, since December 2nd of last year with my college football picks. Good for 65%. Uh, what am I missing? Major League Baseball, 53 and 31, 63%. Had the over last night in the Houston game. Um, that's since August the 4th. So been rolling along in baseball. NFL, after a 2 and 5 opening week, I've gone 16 and 10 since, which is good for 62%, including 3 and 1. In last week. So uh, all of my picks, gamblersworld.net. Don't forget, invest in this long term, myself and Kyle, Doug as well, as we have uh, subscription plans up of three days, seven day and 30 day. And they're all guaranteed. And the only way you're going to make a lot of money uh, in this industry is not going from guy to guy to guy, whoever's hot, because eventually people co cool off. Find a consistent handicapper, um, which we all are and stick with them okay stick with them stick it out and note at the end of 30 days if you invest in a 30-day package that you're uh, going to be credited back if we don't make a profit and uh, my guess is it's going to be a moot point so fellas thank you so much for your efforts appreciate it all and uh, we'll be back tomorrow at 3 p.m eastern time with our live show uh with sean higgs and jesse shul and before we uh leave doug there's a like button what do you want the folks to do with that? I would think like a potato, Ross. I would get the masher and I would just mash that potato. So that's how I mash that it. like button. It's just a small token of your appreciation for the work, time, and effort we put in to these videos, podcasts, and our channel. Until that, until the next time, which is tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern time. Thank you for joining us, folks. For Doug Upstone, Kyle Hunter, and Ross Benjamin. Take care and God bless, folks. <laughs>